All right, thanks for the wonderful introduction, Cassidy and Jenna. Um, there's one other fun fact that they did not mention, which they couldn't have possibly known. The talk I'm giving today, Progressive Rendering, I rehearsed it at least five times just in the last two days. When I rehearsed it last night, I gave the talk to my shampoo bottle. <laughs> it took 35 minutes. Whoa, that's 10 minutes beyond the limit of time. Went to bed, woke up today morning, got ready, gave the talk again to another shampoo bottle. I finished the talk in 20 minutes. Ooh, that's a bit too fast. I need five minutes time to uh, need fillers. I think that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> all right, um, so my name is Dinesh Pandian. I flew all the way from Sydney, Australia to meet you all beautiful people here. Boy, am I excited to be here. I work at a company called Thinkmill. We are a team of JavaScript developers. We work on a lot of JavaScript stuff. We invest heavily in open source. If you are using React, there's a good chance you're using one of the libs either built by the, someone at Thinkmill or is currently maintained by someone at Thinkmill. And the most important part, I go by the Twitter handle Flex Dinesh. So I tweet about uh, web dev, web performance, and recently I've been blabbering a lot about progressive rendering. All right. Today, we will be looking uh, a lot about how a web page renders. We'll start with the basics of what happens when a web page renders, and we will look into the different strategies of loading web pages, client-side rendering, server-side rendering, and there are two different types of server-side rendering. You either render it completely on the server, or you partially render it on the server. And, but the most important part of all, we will be looking into progressive server-side rendering and progressive client-side hydration. Let's get a high. Um, if you take any website, the simple uh, render, the render process is pretty simple. Your browser makes a request, your server has the HTML, your server sends a response back. You see the little flashing there? That is what where your browser passes the HTML and paints the content on the screen. It's pretty straightforward. HTML comes from the server, your browser takes the HTML, passes it, paints it on the screen. As easy and as simple as it sounds, we are living in 2020 now. We are building feature-rich, dynamic applications where the content is generated by making API calls. So rendering is not as simple as that. We need to make API calls. We, we use uh, frameworks like React to ge generate the content. So essentially, there is no empty content at all. We are not building static sites anymore. We are using frameworks to iterate quickly. The whole website is built using JavaScript. So in this case, we have different strategies to render a website using JavaScript. First one is client-side rendering. That is, this is the most straightforward approach, and probably you will see a lot of uh, simple applications using client-side rendering. What happens in client-side rendering is, when the browser makes a request, the server sends an empty, empty body to the client. So here, in the head, we have the script to download the JavaScript bundle, but you can see in the body there is only empty root element. So once the browser passes it, there is nothing to show on the screen. So you just have an empty content. The browser then downloads your JavaScript bundle. Once the download completes, your uh, React or whatever framework you use us, hi, uh, shows the content on the screen. So this is client-side rendering. Your whole JavaScript executes, get the content ready, puts it on the browser, and everything happens only on the client side. Nothing happens on the server. This has a serious drawback. So if you're usually on slower mobile networks, or any, even if it's a network that's slower, if your bundle file is pretty big, even if it's 500 KB sometimes, oh, not kidding, bundle size can go up to even 1 MB. If that happens, it'll take at least 10 to 20 seconds for your browser to download the bundle. So for 10 to 20 seconds, users are sitting ducks. They just watch a blank screen there. There is no update on what's happening. So this is where we follow an approach called server-side rendering. In server-side rendering, when the browser makes the request, the HTML is generated on the server. So here, uh, frameworks like React, they're capable of running JavaScript. When we use a Node.js server, we can execute the whole React application on the server, generate the content that needs to be shown to the user on the server. So here, the HTML that comes back to the user is not just an empty, empty root element. It comes back with the content. So the browsers, they can parse it and show the content firsthand as soon as they're passed. Now, the browser starts downloading your bundle. So what, since the, while the browser is downloading, your user still sees content on the screen, but that content is not interactive yet. Only after your bundle is downloaded, the content becomes interactive. 
So this process, what's happening here is called hydration. Hydration is nothing but your React library. Whatever HTML is on the DOM, React runs again on the browser and makes sure the content is the same, attaches event listeners, and makes it a, a dynamic. But again, as simple as this sounds, the primary content, secondary content we have here, they're not instantly generated on the server. We have to make API calls to generate content. So in reality, this is how server-side rendering will look if we render the whole content on the server. Browser makes a request. So you see, initially, there is an em empty HTML on the server. Now on the server, your application makes an API request. Now the header portion is rendered on the server, rendered in the sense the HTML string is generated. Now the rest of the portion are app, your server will make another API request. Again, the rest of the portion is again rendered on the server. So this goes on until your whole site is, the content for your entire application is generated on the server. Only after it is done, you can send the response back to the browser. If, if you look at, look at it here, the time taken to generate the whole content is pretty high. It can get really, really high if the API calls take a longer time. So your users, they are still waiting now. So the time taken to, the time that takes to send the first the response back to the client is pretty high here. It can easily take from between one or two seconds, and that is not a small number. But once the response comes back, you can show it to the, your, the browser, passes it, paints the content on the screen, and starts downloading your bundled JavaScript file. And once the file is downloaded, your browser uh, React library runs on the client and hydrates your content and makes it interactive. Here, the, the drawback we have here is the time that's taking to generate the whole server content. It is usually the strategy we opt for counteracting that is uh, rendering placeholders on the server. If you look at this approach, instead of generating the whole content on the server, we just generate the primary content on the server. The non-critical content is not generated on the server. We just send placeholders from the server. So you see when the re response goes back to the client, instead of rendering the whole page, you render the primary content and put in placeholders for your secondary content. And now, your, once your browser completes downloading your bundle file, your browser will react, uh, will take care of making the API calls on the client and hydrate the whole portion of your site. So you see, in, in full service rendering, we get to generate all the content on the server, but we cannot send the response immediately. Using placeholder approach, we get to send the response immediately as soon as possible, but we still make a certain portion of the app is rendered on the client and the API calls are made on the client. The real win is if we find a middle ground between full server-side rendering and rendering placeholders from the server. And that is exactly what we are going to do with progressive rendering. Before we head into progressive rendering, the whole idea and concept of progressive rendering uh, works with this concept of HTML streaming. This is not something new. We don't need the latest browsers for HTML streaming to work. This has been around for decades. Even if you take the oldest of browsers, in the early days, most of the websites worked based on the concept of HTML streaming. Now, we can bring it back to the latest frameworks like React. So this is what happens in, when you stream your HTML content to the browser. Your browser makes a request, you can see the server sends, doesn't send the whole HTML, it's just sending the first part of your HTML, it sliced it up to the header. As soon as the browser receives it, your browser can paint it on the screen. Now the connection is open, the server can send the second chunk, the other, other portion of the HTML. As soon as your browser receives it, the browser can paint it on the screen. This goes on until the last HTML is received. So this is streaming of content from the server. The idea is your browser doesn't have to wait for the entire HTML to be downloaded, and your ser server doesn't have to send the whole content in the first response. It can send the uh, responses in chunks, predictably in streams. Now, looking at how it works with progressive rendering, your browser makes a request. Your server, first time, it sends a placeholder, like what we did for server rendering placeholder. You just put in the primary content and placeholder on the screen. Now, we don't ha now JavaScript starts downloading in the background, and your server can send the second chunk. We can show the secondary content on the browser before your JavaScript bundle download completes. And when the third chunk comes in, we just send us, so this is basically the concept of stitching. 
we send a script that stitches the content on a HTML that's already on the client. Now, once the bundle download completes, so because since everything is happening in the background, it happens asynchronously. Once the bundle download completes, you can just hydrate your content. Nothing fancy here. So we get the benefits of both using play server under placeholders, at the same time rendering all your content on the server. So while I wrote this talk, it, we originally planned only to talk about progress of server rendering, but the amazing React team recently uh, released the experimental concurrent mode. And with the concurrent mode, we have this beautiful progressive hydration. So the concept is simple. React concurrent mode is not just uh, asynchronous updating the DOM. It's not just about performance. It also ha has a progressive hydration around suspense boundaries. What that means is, wh whatever is the suspense boundary, it is just plain old promises under the hood. So when a chunk comes from the server, we can declaratively tell React to, hey, hydrate this portion only when this chunk comes out. And we can also tell React, hey, if the chunks takes a longer time to come in, you can you render the content on the client. Don't worry about it for the server. So we have granular control over how a suspense boundary is rendered. So you see, when you, if you look at progress of hydration, you render the placeholder first, and the server sends the chunk. In the background, your bundle file starts getting downloaded. But here, before the third chunk comes in, down, bundle download completes. So you hydrate whatever that's left on your client. And when the rest of the chunk comes in, React can hydrate that portion in the suspense boundary. This is pretty fantastic. Yep. All right, those are all theoretical. Now I've built a sample app to see how it works. Let's take a look. Let's assume um, this is an average website. The content you see in darker shades, uh, those are going to be your primary content, and the content you see in lighter shade, that's going to be a secondary content, which means secondary content is not critical. You don't need to show it to a user as soon as possible. Now, if we render the app in client-side rendering mode, I'm going to simulate the network speed to Wi-Fi. This is pretty quick, right? Because Wi-Fi is pretty fast. Where you usually we develop using uh, faster internet, so you won't see much difference between client-side rendering and server-side rendering in Wi-Fi mode. So you see, when you server render, you have the content here, but that bundle downloads pretty quickly, and you hydrate the content pretty quickly. But you the you can see the real benefit and difference when you start uh, simulating in the network mode. So in mobile mode. So if you render it using client-side rendering in the mobile mode, see it takes a while. It's just a white screen. There's nothing to show to the user. It takes, well, five, six. So there's one MB of bundle being downloaded for the sake of example, and it took six seconds to show the first content to the user. And it's not really good. Six seconds is really, really slow. If you render in server render mode, so you can see, primary content comes in as soon as possible. But secondary content, you can show the secondary content only after the bundle downloads. So still, it's, it's good that primary content shows as soon as possible, but it takes time to show the secondary content. If there is a way we could get the secondary content to the user as soon as possible, then that's definitely a win for everyone. I'm going to show it one more time. It's going to take six seconds here to show the secondary content. Oops. Yeah. Now. If you rent, now what, let's see what happens if we render this in progress render mode. Primary content is there, secondary content gets stitched from chunks, and so once your bundle JavaScript, uh, uh, your bundle file download completes, you just need to hydrate. So you have the capability to show the secondary content, you are rendering your secondary content on the server, chunking it to your client, and just stitching it to your HTML. So you don't have to rely on your client to download and show secondary content. Things get really crazy when you opt for a slow mode. 
you can see the uh, difference, uh, obvious difference here. Let's see, let's render it on full client side. Okay. There we go. So we have white screen. I know how long this is gonna take because I've done this before, but let's wait. I think I can just walk out, get a coffee, and come back before we see something on the screen. 20, 21, 22. So, yeah. See, it takes 25 seconds to show any content for the, uh, to the user in slower mobile networks. And if, if the research shows that if you have a global user base, there are really a lot of people are there on slower networks. It's not just a marginal amount of people. A lot of people are there on slower networks. Fellow Australians will relate. Internet in Australia is really, really slow. And so if you render the same thing in super slow network in server render mode. So you see, it's good that we have content on the screen. We have the primary content. Um, it's not really visible on the screen, I, but I'm too proud of it. The section right and left section, you see, they have shimmer views. They are shining in the, to show that content is loading. Yeah, we, going to, we have to wait 25 seconds to show the secondary content to the user. It's better than client-side rendering, but still, you know, it's going to take that long to show any content. It's not good at all. But if you want to progressively render your app, see. You have the content here already. You have to wait 25 seconds to hydrate, but still all the content is here. You might wonder why the secondary content immediately loaded. That is because the time it takes for the chunk to reach your user is really slow in slow network mode. So when the first chunk was coming back, the rest of the chunks were generated from the server and sent immediately. So that's why you know chunk one, two, three, four already loaded before the first response came to the browser. You, if we can simulate the network latency a bit more, you can see that in progressive rendering, you have placeholders, second chunk comes in, you stitch it to the DOM, another chunk comes in, you again stitch it to the DOM, and now you can sit and wait until your whole bundle downloads. You don't have interactivity yet, but still in all other modes you don't have interactivity either. It's better to show content rather than show no content at all. 23, 25, there we go. All right. Um, so if you want to take a look at uh, how this is done in CodeWise, I will briefly walk it through. Um, I remember what Max uh, said in his talk. Tr great abstractions are making the comp removing the complexities and reducing it to simple reusable steps. That is one complication with uh, progressive rendering. There is no reusable API. Since it's an experimental mode, you're going to have to write really hacky code to get it done. But it works nevertheless. Benefit the users have the benefit, not the devs though. I mean, come on, if you're um, having a mobile phone and if your site can load really, really fast, you're going to be super happy about it. All right, so, so in the server, we are rendering, so this part is where progress render happens. Um, so whenever there's a response right, you render the first chunk and you have an await, you wait for the response for the second chunk, and then you write it, you wait for the response for the further chunk, and then you write it. Once everything is written to the stream, you just close the stream, it is as simple as that. As to how we are rendering these progressive components, I wrote a simple util. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so we just need to tell the util how to, from where we are rendering, and we need to give an ID for the placeholder. And with that placeholder, you know, the scripts that are coming through the chunks will know where to replace the content on the browser. And if we are rendering on the client, we wrap it in a lazy component. If not, we just use a normal component to render a server component. It's as simple as that. All right, going back. Quickly recapping what all we saw here. In client-side rendering, no content comes from the server. Not your primary content, not your secondary content, only an empty div comes from the server. But, and once your bundle downloads, the latency to fetch data, the API calls, is going to be really high. The reason being, your API calls travel all over the world to your server there, and the latency is high. Your 
AP, the UAP, the servers that your AP calls make requests, they're not co-located. And when we just saw what happens on slower networks. So when your bundle size is pretty high, your uh, user satisfaction is going to take a huge hit in slower networks. But the benefit is they're just HTML files. We can host them statically. <coughs> Netlify. So we can host them statically in any of the static hosting sites. In server rendering, the benefit we have is the primary content comes from the server. We can send the secondary content as well, but it's going to really slow down your uh, response time. So the, what we do instead, we load the secondary content on the client. We wait for the bundle to be downloaded. So in slower networks, it's better than client-side rendering, but still it is not as good as progressive rendering. But the advantage though, if you're the content on the, you're showing on your web page, it is not uh, as dynamic. It, 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 the, there's going to be a part of the application that's common for all the users. You can pre-render them on your during build time and then host it statically. That's one of the advantages. But when we opt for progressive server rendering coupled with progressive high, high, client hydration, you have the primary content from the server. You have your secondary content from the server. Data fetch latency is super low. The reason being, your API calls happen in the server, and most of the time, arguably, don't quote me there, but most of the time, your APIs are co-located with your server. That means your API response is super damn quick. And it doesn't matter how fast or how slow your mobile network is. Even if on faster networks, uh, response time is pretty much the same. Even on slower networks, time is pretty much the same, because all the content is rendered on the server. Just the time to hydrate is going to change. One other advantage here, especially this applies only to React, with the suspense boundaries, you can build your own strategies. What if your user is on a faster network? What if uh, the bundle downloads quicker than the stream completes? Or what if your stream completes before your bundle download completes? You have granular control over what to do when that happens, whether to use the content from the server or just discard the chunk and just load it on the client. You can do all kinds of fancy things with progressive rendering. One downside though, you cannot pre-render. The reason being, your server has to be dynamic and send stuff down the stream. But it's okay, I think given all the benefits we have here, we can totally ignore that we cannot pre-render your site. That will be all. Uh, my name is Dinesh Pandian. Thank you so much, you are all awesome.